Hi, welcome back. I'm Scientist Kate. This is Grade Kindergarten, Sunlight and Weather, Lesson 3.1, Part 2, Getting Warm in the Sunlight. For this lesson, you will need a piece of paper and a pencil or something else to write with. Go get those materials and then meet me back here ready to do some science. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome back. Do you remember the first part of the lesson with Miss Diaz? She read us this book about the temperature of surfaces in the desert the longer they were in the sun. Do you remember this book? I really liked it. I love to listen to Miss Diaz read, and I also think lizards are really cool. Here's the book. Do you remember that when the lizard first woke up in the morning, it was too cold for the lizard to come out? It had to stay in its hole. And then later in the morning, the lizard could come out because it was warm. Then in the afternoon, it got too hot and the lizard had to leave the rocks and sand to go into the shade. I really liked the book. And I want to investigate more about how temperature changes over time. So how could we investigate whether the surfaces being in the sun for a longer time is the cause of surfaces getting warmer. How could we investigate that? Do you have any ideas? Great. I was thinking we could use the model. Do you remember the model from last time? We used a lamp and some foam rubber and a tool to measure the temperature. Do you remember what we call a tool that measures the temperature? Tell me. That's right, a thermometer. We took the thermometer and we put it on the foam rubber and we measured whether it was warmer with the lamp on, like sunlight, or with the lamp off. And we found out that it's much warmer with the lamp on, just like it's warmer outside when the sun is shining on us. We want to know if sunlight shining for longer makes the Earth's surface warmer. What could we do with the materials in our model to represent the sun shining on the Earth from night to morning to afternoon? Think about it. What could we do? Those are great ideas that you have. Here's my idea. I was thinking that we could represent nighttime by having the light turned off and not shining because the sun is not shining at night. Do you think that's a good idea? If you agree with my idea, give me the agree sign. Great, I'm glad you agree. How could we represent morning? Should we turn the lamp on? Yeah, I think we should. But we should also only have it shining on the foam rubber for a little bit of time. Because in the morning, the sun is only shining on the earth for a little bit of time. Do you agree? Great. How could we represent afternoon with the model? What do you think? I was thinking we could let the lamp shine on the foam rubber for a longer time. Because in the afternoon, the sun has been shining down on the surface of the earth for a longer time. Do you agree? Awesome. Now let's think about our model. Remember that scientists use models all the time, but models are different from real life. How will our model with the lamp be different from the sun shining on Earth in real life? What do you think? Yeah. First of all, our model will be much smaller than real life. In real life, the sun and the earth are huge. But in this model, everything will be smaller so that we can observe it with our eyes. How else will the model be different from real life? Think about how much time we're going to give to the model. Yeah, we're only going to use the model for maybe 10 minutes. We are not going to 
you let the lamp shine all day long, the way the earth shines on earth, all, or the way the sun shines on earth all day long. So our model is going to be smaller and it's going to take less time than real life. So we're going to kind of speed everything up. Does that make sense? Great. Okay, so here's where you're going to need your piece of paper and your pencil. If you don't have a piece of paper and a pencil, pause the video right now and go get a piece of paper and a pencil. And then unpause the video and meet me back here. Hi, welcome back. Do you have your paper and pencil? Good. I want you to take your pencil and make your paper look like my paper looks right here. Do you see that there are three sections? The section on the left says night. The section in the middle says morning. And the section on the right says afternoon. Pause the video and write night, morning, and afternoon on your paper. If, if you wanna draw lines down your paper to separate the sections, you can do that too. When you're ready to move on, unpause the video and rejoin me. Welcome back. All right, now that you have your paper labeled, we're going to make some predictions. You know what a prediction is, right? Of course you do. You've made predictions in science before. Now, before we actually set up the investigation, let's predict what we think the thermometer will say when we take an observation of it at night. So in that first section right here that says night, I want you to write the letter P. P is for prediction. And next to the letter P, I want you to predict what temperature do you think we will see on the thermometer at night? Do you think we will see very cold, cold, cool, warm, hot, or very hot? I'll give you a second to write your answer. Great. Now let's move on to making, oh wait, I forgot to tell you my prediction. Ha <laughs> ha, my prediction for night is that it's gonna be cold. I made that prediction because it was cold in the book when it was nighttime in the desert for the lizard. So I predict that we'll see the same thing here in our investigation. Okay, let's move on to the morning prediction. What do you predict the temperature will be in our investigation in the morning? Write the letter P and then write what temperature you think you will see. Very cold, cold, cool, warm, hot, or very hot. Awesome. My prediction for the morning is that it's going to warm up a little bit and we're going to see a cool temperature in the morning. If you made a different prediction, that's fine. My prediction may not be correct. All right, what about the afternoon? Write the letter P for prediction, and then write what your prediction is for the temperature. Did you make your prediction? Great. My prediction is that in the afternoon, it will be warm. So I think it's gonna get warmer throughout the day. It's gonna start out cold at night, it's going to be cool in the morning and it's going to be warm in the afternoon. Did you make the same prediction as me or a different prediction? All right, are you ready to find out? Let's do the investigation. Now, I am going to show you a video of me setting up the investigation and I want you to observe the way that I do it. Are you ready? Okay.
okay, did you see me set that up? I have the lamp in the same spot that I had it in our last investigation. I had the foam rubber. I put the thermometer on the foam rubber and then I covered it with another piece of foam rubber. I did that because a scientist, another scientist, called me up and said, Scientist Kate, your investigation will go a lot better if you put the thermometer inside the rubber. And I took her advice because she is a scientist who knows a lot about temperature and weather. So that's why I set the investigation up that way. Now, we're gonna fast forward three minutes with no sunlight, and that's gonna represent nighttime. And then we're gonna take a reading or an observation of the thermometer. Are you ready? Let's see what happens after three minutes with no sunshine. Did you see what I did there? I did two things in that video. The first one is I checked on the temperature inside the foam rubber to see what the temperature is for nighttime. And it showed us 22 degrees, which is cool. Then I set up the next part of the experiment, which was turning on the lamp and setting the timer for three minutes so that we can take our next observation for morning. While we're waiting those three minutes for the light to shine on the foam rubber, let's go back to our paper. Remember that at night, I made the prediction that the thermometer would say cold. Was my prediction right? No. When we made the observation, we found out that the thermometer said cool, not cold. Oh no, does that mean I'm a bad scientist because my prediction wasn't what we actually observed? Oh, whew, thank goodness. Thank you for making me feel better. Thank you for reminding me that all scientists make predictions and then sometimes make observations that don't match their predictions. And that's okay. That's part of being a scientist. So if you made a prediction that wasn't cool, that's okay. We're learning and we're gathering more information. So now it's been about three minutes. We need to go check and see what the temperature is for the morning part of the investigation. I predicted that it's gonna say cool. What do you think? Let's go check, are you ready? All right, did you see what I did in that part of the investigation? I showed you the temperature. What temperature did the thermometer show for the morning? That's right, it said it was warm. The temperature had gone up from cool to warm. Awesome! Then I set my timer for three more minutes so that later we can make our observation of the afternoon. While we're waiting for those three minutes, let's fill, let's fill out our sheet. So I predicted in the morning that the thermometer would say cool. Was my prediction correct? No, the thermometer actually turned out to say warm. So the thing that we observed on the thermometer is a warm temperature. Now that means two times I've had the wrong prediction. Is that okay? Oh, thank you for making me feel better. Was your prediction correct? It's okay if it was, and it's okay if it wasn't. We're learning together. So let's look at the pattern. I predicted that night would be cold, morning would be cool, 
and afternoon would be warm. Here's what we've observed. We've observed that nighttime is cool and morning is warm. Hmm. Do you think the afternoon will still be warm after the three extra minutes? Interesting. There's only one way to find out. Are you ready? Wow, did you see the temperature reading on that thermometer? I predicted that the afternoon would be warm, but what did we observe? We observed that in the afternoon, the temperature is hot. So at night, the temperature was cool. In the morning, the temperature was warm. And in the afternoon, the temperature was hot. Awesome, thanks so much for doing that observation with me. Now here's what I want you to do. Do you remember that we said that scientists like to communicate their ideas? Well, I want you to be able to communicate what we did in our investigation today. Maybe you wanna tell some adults in your house. Maybe you wanna tell your brother or sister. Maybe you wanna tell your cousin or your neighbor. Whoever you can talk to, you wanna share the results of your science investigation. So. I've given you some sentence stems here. I want you to pause the video and I want you to write these sentence stems on your paper and then fill in the blank with the correct answer. So let's look at the first one. In the night column, it, I wrote, at night, the temperature is, what word should you fill in the blank? Yeah, you're gonna put cool. At night, the temperature is cool because that is what we observed. Now pause the video, fill out night, morning, and afternoon. And when you're done, unpause the video and rejoin me so we can wrap up our lesson. Welcome back. Thanks for recording all of your observations so that you can communicate them. Look what I made while you were gone. I made this timeline. A timeline is a line that shows how things happen in order from beginning to end. You can see at the beginning, I have nighttime because our investigation started out with nighttime and with the lamp turned off. So at zero minutes, it was listed as cool on the thermometer. Then later, we let the lamp shine down for three minutes to represent the morning and the thermometer read warm. Then we waited three more minutes to represent afternoon and the thermometer said hot. So we started at zero minutes, we went up to three minutes, and then we added another three. And what's three plus three? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six minutes. Awesome job adding. Let's compare our investigation to what happened in the book that Ms. Diaz read to us. In the book, the lizard was cold at night. Did we find out that we would have cool temperatures at night? Does that match what we read in the book? Yeah, it's also cool in the desert at night. And our lizard was too cool to come out of his little burrow. In the morning, after the sun had been shining down on the earth for a little while, the lizard was warm. It came out of its hole and it laid on a rock in the sun. Does that match what happened in our investigation in the morning? Was it warm? Yeah, awesome, it matches. And in the afternoon, the sand and the rocks got too hot, so the lizard had to go find some shade to cool off. Did we find out that in the afternoon, the temperature of the rubber was hot? Yeah, we did. So our investigation matches the things that we learned about in the book. I love when that happens. What new idea did you learn today? 
You can either pause the video and talk about it with someone, or you can tell me. Would you want, do you want to know the idea I learned today? I learned that the sun heats up the surface of the earth more and more and more throughout the day. So at nighttime, it's very cool because there's no sunlight. In the morning, it warms up and by afternoon, it gets hot. I learned that new idea today. Thanks for sharing yours. All right, thanks for joining me for lesson 3.1. Part two, getting warm in the sunlight. I had so much fun doing an investigation with you and making those videos so that you could see the investigation at home. I'll see you for the next lesson, but until then, I want you to stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you next time. Adios.